I'm Bree Luck, and you are listening to the Pause to Go podcast, where we explore the process of turning life's transitions into stellar transformations. You can expect interviews with experts, straight talk with remarkable humans, and conversations about making the most of every phase of life. Because when we approach life's stickiest spots with curiosity, support, and a little bit of inspiration, anything is possible. So whether you're on your way to work or settling in with your favorite beverage, together we can pause to go. As a solopreneur, I really like the flexibility to work from pretty much anywhere, so I'm happy to head down to Codebase Coworking, where I can enjoy the company of others while I tackle my to-do list. Also, they have a state-of-the-art, consumer-friendly podcasting studio that is, frankly, my home away from home. So head over to Codebase Coworking, check it out, and when you do, tell them that Bree sent you. Why does time fly? When we are having fun. When I was a little girl, my mother worked for Tweetsie Railroad. Uh, It was a small amusement park, and it's nestled between the college town of Boone and the ragged mountain vistas of Blowing Rock in the mountains of North Carolina. Tweetsie Railroad was my second favorite place in the world. My first favorite place in the world was the Land of Oz, but we'll talk about that another day. It was a close second, Tweetsie Railroad. And the reason is that the park featured a Wild West theme that was immensely popular when it opened in 1957. Westerns were popular then, and so the idea was that Tweetsie, the theme park, was set up like an old town in the Wild West. And when my mom worked there, which was in the mid-70s, a ride on the locomotive featured a stop at the saloon, a bank robbery from a couple of bandits, who, as I recall, got on the train and scared the living daylights out of most of the kids there. And the glorious, like, indelible, smoky smell of a real, live steam engine. (laughs) There is even a cowboy celebrity who I loved who would drop in from time to time, Fred Kirby, the singing cowboy who entertained the children of North Carolina on Charlotte's WBTV, and he might as well have been the Pope to me. (laughs) Uh, I had a VIP pass to Tweetsie. And when I think of that time, really some of the best memories of my childhood were there. (laughs) I can still hear that whistle of the engine. (laughs) I mean, truly, my mom had the best job of any mom I knew. This month, I have been able to relive those memories, sort of, as I've been volunteering as a train conductor for the Holly Trolley Holiday Train on the downtown pedestrian mall in Charlottesville, Virginia, where I live. This weekend was my first stint, and I had the best time. I pulled together a costume of red dungaree overalls, a plaid scarf, red steampunk aviator glasses, and a stocking cap. I mean, I know that's not the traditional engineer ensemble, but you know, I had to put my own spin on it, and I was ready to ride. (laughs) I just, I had the best time. Watching small children squeal in delight as this tiny little train pulled up to the tiny little makeshift station, and I welcomed them all aboard. Okay, so this little train might not have had the same story past as locomotive number 12 at Tweetsie, which 
not only traversed the Appalachian Mountains from 1918 to 1940, but was also bought by none other than Gene Autry, one of Hollywood's biggest Western stars in 1954. And recently, Locomotive Number 12 celebrated more than 100 years in service, carting wild things over a rocky Appalachian terrain. My train <laughs> was powered by a riding lawnmower, and my whistle was a little bell that made more of a twinkly little ding a ding a ding a ding sound than the majestic train call. But I will say that conducting that train may have comprised the most fulfilling four hours of my whole year. And the time flew by. Really, I arrived at the train station midday, and it seems like I hardly blinked before the air turned cold and the children were heading home for dinner. Where did the hours go? And when do I get to do it again? And this brings me to the topic that I'd like to explore today, which is why does time fly when you're having fun? And I'm going to get to that in just a second. I want to take a moment to tell you about another fun thing that we're doing, and that's the rehearsal room. I will begin offering weekly open coaching rehearsal rooms online. You apply and you can join a weekly rehearsal room and bring whatever needs rehearsing in your life. So you can drop in any time on any of those weekly calls up to four times a month and rehearse something that needs just a little extra attention in your life. That can be a difficult conversation, that can be a board meeting presentation or your upcoming TED talk or an audition piece that you're working on. Or maybe you just want to share an idea out loud and see how people respond to it. Maybe you have an elevator pitch that you want to rehearse. It can be anything. I know how important creative communities have been to me in my life, and I wanted to find a way for us to make them together no matter where we are in the world. And, you know, rehearse. Rehearse for life. You can go check it out and find out more information at thelovelyunbecoming.com. That's my website. It's the first thing up there. It says the rehearsal room. I can't wait to rehearse with you. And now back to why time flies when you're having fun. It turns out that this has to do with the human brain and how our internal clocks work. Because unlike a mechanical clock, our timekeeping ability isn't limited to one mechanism, but is shaped by all sorts of processes. So there's this guy, Joe Payton. He's a neuroscientist in Portugal, and he says that there are probably a multitude of subjective timing mechanisms in the brain that are influenced by neurochemicals like dopamine and adrenaline, our old friends. So there's a concept called the dopamine clock hypothesis, and it holds that increased dopamine released into the system speeds up an animal's subjective sense of time or its internal clock. And we're animals, so that works for us too. But let's talk about first rodents. So when rodents are treated with amphetamine which enhances dopamine release, they respond earlier to test cues than when they are tested without the drug. They move more quickly and respond in less time. My husband has talked about this phenomenon in his own life, not so much with having fun, but he was in an earthquake, in the big San Francisco earthquake, and he remembers throwing a ball afterwards and actually feeling the trajectory of the ball, like being able to see it at every part of its arc as though time was slowing down. But really, it was that he was responding more quickly. So that 
was likely due to the dopamine in his brain after this very, very stimulating event of experiencing an earthquake. So, Jeff, I apologize for comparing your ball-throwing response times to the response times of lab rats, but there we have it. Now, if you really think about this, it seems a little counterintuitive. If our dopamine up perception of time feels faster than the actual time itself, shouldn't time intervals actually seem slower? In this case, shouldn't time actually crawl when we're having fun? But according to Peyton, there's an answer for this too, and it revolves around attention. You see, when an experience feels good, attention to time is reduced. So the intervals of passing time actually seem shorter than they are. In fact, you don't even have to be having fun for the minutes to slip away. You really just have to be deeply engaged in your activity. So when you're not having fun, but you want time to pass more quickly... One strategy might be to increase your focus on the activity by limiting distractions. It may not be as fun as driving a train, but time will still fly all the same. Hey, two quick notes. I'll be driving the free Holly Trolley on Sunday, December 18th from 12 to 4 and Saturday, December 4th from 12 to 2 on the downtown mall in Charlottesville, Virginia. So if you live in town or if you're coming to town, swing by for a ride. The rides are free and they are a part of the Friends of Charlottesville downtown Magic on the Mall festivities. And if you want more information about how to make time fly for you, try volunteering with an organization that you care about. Studies show that volunteering helps to counteract the effects of stress, anger, and anxiety, and they may actually increase your overall feelings of happiness. I mean, that's like double good. That's double awesomeness. So whether you're answering calls for a great organization that you care about or reading books to children at your local library, try making a little magic in your community. Hey, you know what I'm loving? I'm loving speak pipe memos. So I got this speak pipe memo last week. Bree and Ann Hodnett. Wow. Two of my favorite people. This is Ann Louise. And your interview was priceless. A blessing. An absolute blessing. I will keep it forever. And listen to it over and over. Yeah, I love a good speak pipe memo. And I'd love to get one from you this week, too. So send me a speak pipe memo this week with your favorite volunteer experience of 2022. The link is in the show notes. And I will give you and your organization a shout out on my Instagram page at The Lovely Unbecoming. I hope the time flies for you all week long. See you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Pause to Go podcast. If you got something out of this episode, let us know. Share it with a friend, join our Facebook group, and subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts if you loved it. If not, no worries. We want you to tell it like it is, and we'd love to have your input. If you want to know more about what I'm up to, you can follow me on Instagram at thelovelyunbecoming or at my website, thelovelyunbecoming.com. Stay curious, y'all.